Welcome back, everybody, to week number three of the Quake Pro League Europe and CIS edition, where we have our first match underway, done and dusted. It was cooler, very dominantly taking it over Toxic. And our second series of the day is going to be Zron versus Garpy. What do you think about this one, Flea? It's definitely an interesting matchup because a lot of people are seeing Garpy as a bit of an underdog right now since he more or less effectively retired from Quake but then just came right back out of that. I mean, it's Quake. No one ever retires. I've seen so many players come and go over the years, so it's no surprise. I would like to give a personal shout out to Garpy for having what could be the world's shortest retirement from Quake. <laughs> uh, how he obviously retired as a player and you know pursued other projects and pursued other things and then... Here he is, straight back into the fray. Um, but ultimately, I, I think it's, it's always hard for me to count out Garpy as a player because in Quake Champions in particular, he actually has had quite some higher levels of success. He's won yeah, tournaments actually. in the past. He's kind of placed in the, the upper echelon, you know, the top of the pyramid uh, in some Quake Champions events. And he's taken out some really, really dangerous players to get there. A huge part of it, I think, just comes down to his general composure. And yep. I know we always will use this one big talking point to describe Quake players, especially of the older generation, which is experience. Yep. And that's what Garpy is entirely built around. He is not just a current legend in Quake. He's a legend of Arena FPS. Like he has oh, name yeah. a, name an Arena FPS. He's probably played it at the highest level and done well in tournament. Yeah. Also, very interesting to note is that actually in the times they've met at LAN. Garpy has won two out of three of them encounters against Krum. He beat him back at QuakeCon 2018 and then also at DreamHack Denver 2017. So Krum did win 2-0 at QuakeCon a few weeks ago, but overall it's actually still Garpy who has a 2-1 lead. What I'm thinking about here is the level of shape the players are currently in. And Garpy, I think those tournaments that you mentioned were when Garpy was in his highest yeah. form. But they, those tournaments were when Dron, I think, was in a slightly... Uh, he was still getting there. He was still reaching the potential he was known for. Whereas recently, Gron has started doing exceptionally well and he's finally starting to hit that level that I think we all knew he could reach. And yep. he's been doing extremely well so far. He is another one of the, I guess, more younger players in the scene who holds himself to a high standard. And when he doesn't perform well, he is his own harshest critic. Yep. But this is season one of the Quake Pro League. He's not having a horrendous time so far. And if he beats... Garpy, of which he is projected to do so. That is everyone's prediction. Uh, yeah. We'll see if he can do what must be done. Yeah, Kron definitely looking solid. Back at Quake on the actually beat the hang. So that's quite the achievement as he's one of the best North American players there are. And Kron so far, he hasn't really breached past that fifth place at any major tournament. So he's yet to enter that top four. But at this point with the Quake Pro League, he seems very dedicated, he's practicing a lot and definitely looks like he has an opportunity to maybe set his best performance yet. For sure. And he, he's had, uh, I suppose, the situation of having a bye early. Ron didn't play last week. Um, so he's now, you know, back in back in the thick of things. Yep. The, the big thing that everyone's kind of excited to watch with uh, Ron this week is, we're just about to get into it, the oh, picks yeah. and bans. Those with an eagle eye will probably notice it already, but I'm going to do the easy bit for you. Scale bearer. Scale. We're actually going to see some scale bearer today. Yep. Up until, up until today, he was one of the two champions that have not been picked in the online segment of the Quake Pro League so far. The other one being, of course, Strog. But today will be the first day we're going to see scale in action. Looking at the rotations here, Awoken, Molten Fools, finishing things off, as always, it seems, with the Veil of Nath. And, you know, the Awoken picks, we can see the Doom Slayer, that makes total sense. Uh, the double jump means so much on maps like that. Molten Fools, he's gone in with uh, BJ Blaskovic, which is, you know, damage incarnate. Uh, going a bit more classical with the Ranger pick there with Garpy Galena on Awoken for that sustainability, those tricky locations to put the totems down. And then, Finally, the Veil of Nath. The keel was removed, and Tron, in it. some players have actually banned out his scale bearer in the past. They do not want any oh, yeah. part of it. A huge part of that is because when he was practicing with people online in the old time limit dual practice, his scale bearer used to do pretty well, I think we'll generously say. <laughs> so players just don't want to deal with it. Whereas today, uh, we might see exactly why it's banned so much. Yeah, I mean, scale is a very situational champion. He really needs to have that opportunity to build a speed and usually take someone's by surprise, so it's not a champion that everyone is comfortable playing. Other than Krum, the only person I can really think of that has made attempts at playing uh, scale at the highest level is Tox, really. He's, I've seen him run him quite a few times, but uh, 
definitely an unusual champion. I've definitely seen Toxic use Scale Bearer more in, I think, the, the, his like scrims and his practice games. Yeah. And I've seen him use it against Toxic, uh, sorry, against Cooler before, sorry, on maps like Blood Covenant and things like that. And he's never done atrociously bad. Uh, it's just, like you said, it's a very specific role that Scale Bearer will bring to the table. Um, not surprised to see it on Vale, but um, normally when I, when I see Ron play, he, he really likes using the champion on something like Molten, where yeah. you've got loads of open space to kind of just build up the speed. Yeah. And the speed, obviously, you know, is just another source of damage when it comes to picking Scale Bearer. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, we've talked about it a lot. I think well, we're guaranteed to see it thanks to the three map system. I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited. So am I. That's going to be amazing to see. So Awoken, though, uh, on, as our first map, this is a really, really, really popular map. I think players are just particularly fond of it. Uh, Thron, we know, is really mechanically strong. Um, yep. And if you are that kind of player that isn't afraid to, I think, you know, use the game's mechanics the way they exist, uh, those spawn traps. And there is no getting yep. around the fact that trapping people on spawn and getting that bonus damage. Um, I, I wouldn't really see a player like Ron really struggling with that because uh, we always have players like Dehang over in America that are kind of innovators and not afraid to kind of just go against the grain if they think something works. I think Ron was kind of like the EU and CIS version of that uh, yep. over our side of the pond. Yeah, we've seen him run quite a few interesting champions several different occasions. Uh, this time, though, Doom is actually pretty what I would say basic pick it's something yeah. that you see all the time on the map that is awoken because you get so much utility out of that double jump there's so many nice spaces that you can use that extra jump you get in the middle of the air to get up to a certain ledge or to bypass an entire part of the map entirely get some really nice shortcuts out of it so from definitely going for the mobility whereas on the other hand Garpy picking Galena that's more of like a safety pick because you've got the totems you can play a bit more defensively hide them around the map and get that extra stack going but of all the players out there we, we do know some players are more likely to, I think, leave totems unattended than others. Um, I kind of feel like just the level of knowledge and, and practice that Ron has, where he is the kind of player that would just sit there and just go into a map privately and just look for awkward totem placings. Oh, he yeah. would kind of always explore those kind of mechanics and try and find some tricks that would catch people off guard. I wonder if there's going to be many locations Garpy can kind of get away with just leaving a totem that Ron won't find. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's one of the things I'm a little bit worried about. And, you know, if you can't tell, I'm in a bit of a Doom mood today. Um, Doom Slayer, I just, uh, he's such a fun champion because I he feel is. like they truly did. I feel like it really did take the best bits from Doom 2016's multiplayer and just crammed it into a playable champion at Quake. You've yeah. got the double jump, you've got not necessarily in Duel, I'll give it, but in things like Free For All and that, the satisfaction of the Berserk, obviously a nod to the glory kills and stuff oh, like yeah. that. All in all, he is a very, very fun champion if you played those earlier Doom tiles. It's so good. And when those Berserks do come out in Duel, they are phenomenal. It's so fun to see. You can often, very, I think he's usually used more to like get away from a yeah. situation because you instantly reach your max speed the moment that you use the Berserk ability. But we have seen some incredible punches just on this map too, Awoken, come out at previous tournaments. So he's definitely a joy to watch. I always find it really funny how the whole idea, right, is to rip and tear. The Berserk was originally designed to be this you're just seeing red, the metal music kicks in and you're just punching everything, you can't stop punching but actually mechanically in Duel it's best used to run away, yeah. <laughs> which is probably like I think the direct opposite of what Doomslayer yeah. would do in that situation. Pretty much, pretty but you know much. what? We invent the meta. We, we, we do things the way they uh, may not necessarily be intended. But that's what I love about the competitive side. Absolutely. Is that mechanics, you know, they may be designed to be used one way, but when a competitive player gets their hands on them, you never know the kind of weird little tricks and I guess the, the, the current meta ways certain abilities get oh, used. Yeah. And Doomslayer I think is just a, a, a clear example of that. Yeah. Going back to the Galena, though, when you earlier mentioned hiding the totems, I think it also has a lot to do with how much pressure the player can exert. So if you're a Galena who's in control and you're hitting the shot, you're landing the damage, it makes it so much more difficult for your opponent to go and seek out those totems to destroy because they'll be so much more preoccupied with just getting away, getting stacked, finding weapons. So if you can continue doing the damage and applying the pressure, like we saw Cooler do earlier in his first game against uh, Toxic, then it's so unlikely that they're going to be able to consistently take them down. So Chrome definitely has to be careful of that, that he doesn't get overrun, because that's when the totems really shine. Okay, predictions as we go in now into our first map. The expert prediction is a 3-0 for Kron. Uh, Garpy, I think, has his work cut out. On the spot real quick, what do you reckon? I'm going to share the expert opinion. I'm going to say 3-0 to zero for Kron, but I think Garpy can definitely put up one hell of a fight. Yeah, I definitely agree too. I think Kron's in the best shape he's been in so far. Garpy, uh, he's quite unpredictable. He's always a bit of a wild card in tournament, but in terms of a weekly broadcast, uh, my money's definitely on Kron as well. But as we've started things off, Garpy with that Galena, yep. Kron with Doom Slayer. We'll see 
how things are going to start off now. Mega just about to spawn. Garpy giving it up. Instead, opting to try and take a rail instead. Yep. Kron coming aggressively, trying to get a side. Maybe pick up or see when Mega or Heavy Rodder is being picked up. Do some damage. And he's actually landing quite a bit. He's going to push into the fight. Garpy has been picked up heavy at this point. LG versus LG. Kron will break away. And Garpy will try and get position on these two health bubbles. Try and maybe cut off Kron from going to the Mega next. Well. Thron technically could have tried to go away and down banana oh. potentially, but the rail, what an entry shot there. That was an amazing start. Yeah. Garpy's rewarded by the Mega too. Didn't want to panic and get that stack early on. I wonder if he's gonna have time to maybe get heavy. Does Ron even have, I think, the, the utility to try and fight for this? He's gonna concede it, he gets one rail, but that's a good amount of damage because he landed the rail after the heavy was picked up, and that is so important because if you land the shot afterwards, you basically negate that entire pickup, which is what Gron just managed to do. Garpy playing it a bit slowly, but in comes Gron using that double jump so effectively. It's a, such an excellent tool to avoid rocket damage, and Garpy will break away 15 points of health left at that point, and Gron is just going to be relentlessly aggressive, picking up Mega and taking heavy as well, it seems. A really nice rocket there from Garpy, that flick to the left. Just on the offside, I like it, but trying to spring some damage. Unfortunately, that missed Tribal, yeah, he has to get out. He's yep. very railable, though. This is uh, scary territory. Yep. There's no armor either. That missed shot could have been a 1-1, but unfortunately, he misses his mark. And here comes the utility of Galena and her totems. He's able to heal up, and still, again, it misses. These missed rails are, are starting to really punish Ron in these situations. Garpy, he's surviving in so many situations where he otherwise has no right, but he just can't land the damage. Yep. The fight on heavy takes place, Ron. Oh. In and out, but he's very, very weak. I think one, that's one HP. HP. Yeah, has to be. Kron getting away with just a sliver of health remaining. Stacking up slightly. Mega will be the next item up for contest. Here we go. Kron's going to come up. Will he go down? He will. Excellent LG from Garpy. And he can take the Mega as his prize, as his reward before moving on to Heavy. Looking at Kron, maybe hoping to do some more damage. Look at that, that's one of those shortcuts we were talking about earlier. Kron pushing in aggressively. LG Rocket doesn't have rail to work with though. And still pushing in for heavy, so risky. I mean, I guess the consolation prize is he might be able to re-refrag -re here. Uh, he knows that Garpy is going to be extremely weak. The question is how many totems does he have? Does Ron have that information? Um, the danger is, I don't even think it's like, I don't even think Ron's making bad decisions. He's not making these bad reads, but He's putting a lot of faith oh. in it. Oh god, the tribal just peppering it, Garpy. Not wow. expecting that at all. That was nearly perfect tribal. That had to be seeing how much damage he dealt with that. Excellent moves from Krom. Out comes the Berserk and the punch. <laughs> there we go. You gotta love it. Taking down Garpy once again. And now it's 2 to 3. Perfectly reasonable. Just one frag off a deficit. Krom still perfectly in fighting shape. It's an opportunity to score some momentum. I mentioned before I was rudely interrupted by that sick play. Um, Omer. <laughs> It's not even like Ron's making bad decisions. He's just to make in some of these positions he's putting himself in. You have to put a lot of faith in your accuracy, and he would, he's been missing so many rails that if he just didn't, Garpy would have died. He's been under the HP mark of the rail pretty much yeah. every single time. But it is the missed shots that has allowed Garpy. Even here, yeah, like Garpy, if he wants to the pressure on because Ron is missing the shots and he's not putting Garpy weak enough to worry about it, the missed rails are the absolute culprit for that. Yeah, he will land that final rail right there, and that will take down the heavy pretty much instantly, messing up a little bit of jump right there. And Mega looks like it will be going to Garpy. That's a nice bit of damage coming out right there. Very unexpected, and Kron has to kind of seed position on the heavy, play a bit more passively, and just hope to do some damage. Out comes the Tribold again, and that's nice damage. 70 damage Ugh. on the Tribold. Actually, Kron basically outstacking Garpy right now, missing such an important rail, because that's going to give Garpy the stack and the confidence he needs to manifest himself on the map again. I'd ask if we can see his rail uh, statistics, but I'm not even sure we want to at this stage. I think it's pretty self-explanatory that Kron has been unable to hit the rails he's desperately needing, and if he doesn't, I mean, it's, half this map is almost done, and he's hit barely any rails, yeah. and that is directly what is giving Garpy room, I think, to kind of move around the map a bit more free. He's not having to run away, if Ron can't establish control because Garpy's just not leaving him alone, right? And again, another miss. I don't want to point out every single miss, but I mean, do the maths, right? How much health has Garpy survived on because of it? Yeah. If anything, though, Ron actually managing to get a Mega this time around, but takes a bad rail in return. Heavy up in around 15 seconds. 
and he's gonna make a move on it. He's got a few rockets to work with. In he goes. Garpy has got the better positioning, landing the LG, pushing him back, and Kron has to once again abandon his efforts at taking heavy. No armor just yet. There is armor nearby if he's able to sit around and wait for it to appear. The light armor near him was currently gone, which is actually very unfortunate, especially as Garpy is on the warpath. He's looking for another frag, and he gets what he's looking for. Yep. Overstays is welcome near the Mega. He's going to die for it, and Garpy once more just establishing. What's wrong with... I mean, if, you, if you're spawning right next to a rail and it's all you've got and you've been missing every rail, would I even call that a nope. good spawn? <laughs> Not at all. He has to back away from that. Krom needs to start hitting these shots. He oh! even misses the one on the bounce pad. And now Garpy seizes that opportunity to chase, try to do some extra damage. Won't manage, though, but... We've all been there. When you miss a rail and it annoys you. And, and it makes you miss another rail, yep. which makes you miss an, an, which makes you miss another rail and another rail. Draw. Well, I'm so sorry, mate. I'm so, I do not mean to keep bringing attention to it, but it, it's just continuing to happen, isn't it? But I wonder if generally, like, is is Ron even in his own head now because he's missing? Every shot. Is he having mouse problems or something? I, I, I mean, we're seeing a very, very familiar pattern emerge here. Garpy gets position on the major item. Kron goes in to land the shot, misses the rail, and Garpy punishes or get away clean. That's just what keeps happening over and over again. And at this point, I feel like Kron has done more damage with the tribal than he has with the rail. But he is oh. going for weapons. Well, that rocket was excellent. And it's put Ron so weak. He's yeah. going in for the mega, but if Garpy catches him, which he has. Oh, no. I... And that the mistake there was Ron just underestimating Garpy not just turning around and doing yeah. the smart thing, which is just sit there and let him kill himself. That's a nice wreck up the spawn though. Instantly just takes down Garpy. He's got a good eye on that heavy as well. Will take the armor, but still critically low on health. Garpy is just going to back away, doesn't have the weapons to fight with. Out comes that LG okay. though, Kron. Okay, two and a half minutes to go, two frags of a deficit, perfectly doable for Kron. One of the big things here, he's using the LG. Uh, I, I, I genuinely oh. wonder, I do wonder how often he's going to be going in with Rail when he knows it just hasn't been working. It's now Rocket, it's LG. Garpy is frighteningly weak. Beautiful weapon swap to the SMG. That first Rocket though, a bit, a bit of a lucky one. He just landed it defensively and Garpy just jumped right onto it. Garpy managing to take heavy out, stacking Ron by now. But he does manage to back out of the room alive. Doesn't even take down the totem. He clearly saw the totem. I hope he's gonna loop back around for that because you can't afford to leave them up for too long. Because before you know it, there's a whole nest of them. He's getting some nice LG. Garpy misses the shot. A little bit of a, a strange turn of the seesaw right there, actually. Yep. Hey. But now it's 6-6. Six, six, and just like that, Zron has been losing pretty much the entire map. And he's been finally hitting those marks. And misses another rail shot. Misses it back to back. I mean, he, he's going for three misses now. The reason he's been getting a lot of these fights in his favor is because he stopped using the rail. But I am fearful. There we go. Wonderful shot. And he sets it up. I would have been shocked if he missed that one. And the damage of the spawn. That won't hurt one bit. And he's even going to get positioning on Mega as well. Garpy, are you going to commit to this? Oh, Kron actually gives up position at the very last moment. And it will allow Garpy to take it. Did he get a little bit greedy? Did he think he might want to pick up that small half level, the small armor first? Because it costed him dearly. Ron is very weak. Looking to retreat, has to watch out. One single totem with this health is a bad situation. But Garpy needs to call this one back. Yep. By all means, this map could keep going. We have hit the one minute warning, but only one frag separates the two players. Yep. The question is going to be, can Garpy catch him? You know, Ron is absolutely going to play that defensive game. Looking to get a read, hits the shot at yep. last, near the teleporter. and. I actually think that, that one difference in stack that that rail established might make it kind of scary for Garpy because, yeah, he can't really take a fight. He's yep. not got the health anymore. Perfect trap. Off the spawn instantly pushing in aggressively. Totem will delay him just ever so slightly. Misses the follow-up rail, though. And that will be Garpy getting away from the skin of his teeth. Ooh. Almost going down on the return, looking for another peek. But at this point, 20 seconds left on the clock. Garpy has to make these frags happen now. Tron doesn't commit with the Berserk. He's happy to just stay away. He knows that he doesn't have to force anything. He knows he's in the lead. He's got control. So he needs to just let Garpy run down the clock so he will win it. I gotta say, that was a great turnaround for Ron. I think a lot of players could have been, I think, maybe tilted off the, I mean, complete lack of rail accuracy. And... What at, was at, that angle I mean, at the very end? <laughs> that was him just trying to show it to the camera, I think. Just before. Just before, before we thought it. But, that um, was beautiful. 
yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, the rail wasn't amazing either side, as we can clearly see. Um, but I think it, it was just those impactful positions, those moments where uh, Juan consistently had Garpy like yeah. railable to death, countless times. I've straight up lost count of how many times he could have killed him, and he was unable to seal it. And it would give Garpy room to run around, yeah. uh, which gave him room to you know restack back up, fight for those pickups and all that stuff. And it would put uh, Juan more behind than he should have been. But Though that big sort of spree of frags he got halfway through, yeah, he just stopped relying on the rail gun at all and just went with the rocket and LG. And that was definitely the right decision because he missed so many shots. He shot 43 rails that map and he hit only 13 of them, only around 30% damage. And yeah, here we see again Garpy initially a very, very strong start, and ultimately Kron does manage to catch up once again. Yeah, these are some nice actually. Uh, the replays kind of show us how how the fights went normally, and uh, and I, I like shouts to the berserk. Yeah, you know we do get to see the berserk put in a bit of work sometimes. It's just uh, not all the time you'll see it used as an aggressive tool, but if you know that the damage is there. Um, my point though is that I think it was the uh, keeping the cool. Uh, yeah. with Ron. I think those kind of misses in as crucial of a situation as a lot of them were, like even right here, where he was just looking for any means to hit these defensive shots, and he was missing them, which means you know, you're, you're spending time turning around and not focusing on just going as fast as you can to run away. Um, I think a lot of players out there would have been quite, I think, upset by that, and the only change to rail, for the most part, was when he would uh, lay the trap and, and read Garby going through a teleporter, the kind of shot where you quite literally can't miss it. You know, you're, yeah. you're waiting for them, she's teleporter. The only reaction you need is seeing them go through it. Yeah. And at the speed Garpy was going, it's pretty unlikely he was going to miss it. So I think he just kind of changed um, the situations where he would opt to go for that, that kind of like micro shot yeah. that he had been missing the entire time. But, you know, well done. We're talking as if he's lost. He didn't. He actually won the map, <laughs> um, which is a fantastic start. But it looked to me like a slow start. And yep. now we're going into a couple more maps. Absolutely. And I really think that you have a good point in, in raising how Kron managed to keep his cool. And I think that at n one of the best points to describe it is at the very end when he pulled out that second Berserk and he just, he knew Garpy is low. He knew he can kill him with the punch. But instead he looks at the clock and he says, you know what? 15 seconds, I don't have to do it. If I rush in and I end up dying somehow by taking one or two direct rockets, then Garpy actually still has a chance. He has around 10 seconds to find me and kill me. So he just very very collected, decided not to chase the frag and turn right back around to run down the clock. So Yeah, I mean, we, we talked at the very beginning about the results these two players have had in the past. I mean, they used to be on the same team, you know. Uh, Huron had been Maestro for, for a bit, for a small time. I know Maestro had kind of with, uh, they'd sort of changed their players quite a lot during that time. I think that they, they took quite a while, I think, trying to refine their yep. their Quake roster. And I, I kind of feel like, personally, that they must be quite content with their lineup now. So they've, they've had, you know, the Razi and uh, the Vengar and the Garpy, you know, granted yep. for, for quite a long time. And I think this might be the longest run spree of players they've had unchanged um, but my point is is these two players are very familiar with each other yeah. not just because they were former teammates at one point but because uh, they played competitively in tournament it's different versions of duel granted that that was the old system before time limit became the the new thing which is kind of almost uh, uh, weird to say that that time limit duel is the yeah, new thing it is in quake uh, but ultimately I think Ron is in a better shape than Garpy is at, at, at this point in time. That map, it's kind of hard to gauge that. I think Garpy just must have looked a bit more comfortable. Uh, I don't. Know, I feel like it almost looked like uh, Ron was nervous. Like some of those misses looked a little bit suspect. Like the signs of a player yeah. that was just, you know, having the first map of the day in a tournament setting. I know he would, he would have been warming up. Um, but hey, we're going into more maps now, and maybe this is the time you kind of just go straight into your top speed. Yeah, here we go, right off the bat, Kron playing BJ this time around, and Garpy on Ranger. So again, Kron going for the burst damage, Garpy has got that extra mobility, but also, of course, the orb has great damage potential as well. I think also the verticality, uh, the ability to sort of go up jump pads, and even in the, in the center of this map, not having to go as predictably as you could uh, with the teleporter, Ranger becomes a little bit more unpredictable. Yep. As a champion on a map like this, and there's so many ways you can go around the corner anyway, and that would... rail's going to miss, giving Ron an opening chance to maybe chase this down. I would typically favor Ranger out of this matchup. Very often it, it's really close, but I would say that Ranger is the better pick than BJ, because Kron needs to be extremely collected and kind of trap his opponent and bait him into taking fights that are not good for him to just pull out double rockets, double LG, and make something happen. And Kron so far, very, very convincing control. Has got Mega to his name, has got Heavy to go with as well. Meanwhile, Garpy down to 100, 100. Looking pretty healthy himself, but definitely Kron in the driver's seat. I mean, I foresee quite a slow map from this. I mean, the way Kron uh, is already approaching this, where 
his goal is control. Uh, he's not even looking to get frags at the moment. He's looking to just get as much stack as he can, get the timing. Yep. He listens for the armor, or is at least looking to see whether he's... He knows where he is, so he can at least get somewhat of a metal timer as we go. If he maintains a stronger stack than Garpy, when the inevitable fight comes, and you can see he's looking for a trap right now. Yeah, exactly. He just needs to dual wield, catch Garpy a little bit off guard, and that free dual wield damage, if he makes sure it's, like, unreturnable. It's the first rocket. Yep. Going in now for the kill, potentially. Those defensive rockets, though, oh. so good! So good indeed, Garpy. Wise to it. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you gotta be careful. Two weapons, your ammo runs out so much quicker as well. So Kron at the end had to switch to the rail, tried to make something miraculously happen there. Ultimately couldn't do so. And that's going to put Garpy one frag ahead. And damn, look at the rails come out from Kron though. He's learned from last map. He said, no, no more. This time my rail's gonna be so on point. Didn't need to stick with it either. Just change weapon when the time is right. Yep. Don't have to go to the rail all the time. There's so many, such a common mistake that even some players at this level seem to make is uh, having a rail out when you just don't need it. You know, yep. It'll make your life easier and it's effective at all ranges, but Kron making no chances there. Yep. And the LG was, you know, the, the right tool for the job. He's now keeping that control, trying to actually fake out Garpy just a little bit. Yeah. And Garpy was just coming in so aggressively after taking up the Mega Health, but realized at just the right time that Heavy had already been taken, and he's just going to withdraw from that fight. Because, as we just said, Ron with the BJ is really looking to set up these traps and do that burst damage, and here we go, rockets are phenomenal! Out comes the orb, looking the wrong way, and both will go down 2-2. Two to two. There is a victory to be had there. Uh, from Hron though, is that he didn't actually use his ability and Garpy did. Yep. So if they both, you know, restack up and they have opposite parts of the map for the spawn, I think the, the dual wield alone, when Garpy hasn't got the ability to, I think, answer back with the orb, that might matter a great deal. You can see the slow movement. Hron looking for another trap, but I think Garpy trying to say, you know, whatever you can do, I can do better. It's not just Hron that's playing this <laughs> nice and slow, but however, he did what? completely, what? Oh, there we go. completely go past from <laughs> there. The one angle, the one angle he wasn't looking at. And he even looked for it. He tried to see inside the <laughs> yeah. teleporter doorway, but couldn't catch sight of Krom. I'm just surprised how long it took Krom to actually fire that first rocket. It was like a full one or two seconds, and Garpy was just standing there. But Krom setting up a perfect trap, and I think that Garpy at this point is probably going to try and slow it down even more, because he's going to be so cautious knowing that death might lurk around every corner. It's kind of surprising to me that Garpy has been playing as slow as he has, but in that one instance, he just wasn't thorough at all. <laughs> he just didn't look at the angle. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's an awkward time, where even if he did take that angle right at the split second, Kron may have used the teleporter. Uh, might have really messed with his, his, his uh, senses just a little bit. Some damage happens, they're gonna trade. But now he's looking for the rail shot. It's it! Garpy's Mega is not gonna mean too much. There should be a little bit of light armor near him. As we can see, he's just picked it up. Yeah. But, you know, the frag lead, it does belong to Kron. He's got a dual wield. He has just short of every single weapon. Yeah. And we'll see what he can do with it. There you go. Will be up in just a few seconds. Both players kind of waiting on it. Kron just all the way in the back. Both just sneaking around. He's going to get sight of Garpy. That's a good rocket from both players. Garpy actually going to push in. And Kron isn't even going to stick around. He's going to burn his ability and back right off. And that means that both players will have used their abilities at this point. They both have to wait for it to recharge and pick up those valuable hourglasses. So I think we're going to see, again, a little bit of a slow play for the next minute or so, unless something extraordinary happens. Garpy looking for the same rail that had hit him, jumping down towards Mega. The issue is, missing that rail. You can actually look at the stack that Tron's looking at. Oh. He has a rail's worth of health left to try and take this fight. If he wants to be aggressive, it's now even worse, thanks to the heavy. Yep. I mean, he's even gonna try and fight for this Mega, I imagine. Caught the rhythm of the rockets and just didn't get caught by a single one. Garpy knows there's no way he can fight. However, sticking around, very risky. He went for a big play, tried to go for some dire orb damage. I'm honestly kind of surprised he was still there. I, 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 I was so ready for him to run away. Yeah, nice little bit of self damage right there from Kron using the nail gun to do just a tiny bit of damage to himself so he can pick up that small armor and deny it to Garpy because he knows that Garpy off the spawn is going to look for those resources to get himself up to 100, 100 stack and try to take the fight right away. So excellent play from Kron, but Garpy landing some nice rails down there to keep his stack in check. Mega will be going to Grom, but Garpy actually pushes in so aggressively. Rockets are solid from Grom, though. And Grom actually almost got pushed off the Mega right there. 
I think this fight is, uh, this entire map has been Hron's pace. I, the, the, the big thing is that when a fight is happening, he's out stacking Garpy quite significantly. Garpy is then, I think, you know, a bit itchy on the trigger finger with those orbs. However, he might still oh. be able to get it, but what a shot on the rail! He needed to land that one, and it's going to be an even bigger divide. Ron looking much better in this map. I was about to say, Garpy, he's being itchy on the trigger finger with the Dire Orb, because there's no escape. That rail was fantastic, and Ron remains one step ahead once again. Ron absolutely deciding to step up his rail play after that first matchup, because right now he's just, it seems like he's hitting everything. Garpy pushing Ooh. in aggressively, though. Nails coming out and the rail to finish it off. And right now it's starting to get really difficult for Garpy. He's six frags behind. There's three more minutes on the clock. He needs to make something happen and he needs to do so quickly. Almost knocking Tron off the map. That's an excellent start, but still not enough. I'm going to be honest. This is actually, you can see why Ron in the previous map was actually putting himself in those situations and those positions. Because if he just had the accuracy he expected himself to have, he would have been able to win these fights. Like, these are the exact wow. same positions and fights he took on Awoken that it's, none of them worked because he missed every single rail. Now he's hitting the shots. You can see why he was putting himself in those situations to be yeah. with. And the frag deficit is just going up and up and up for what? Huh? Kron. Oh. He was not. Oh. Is he just going to sit on this and oh. wait? There comes Garvey. No, no, he's... Oh, God. He's not even going to go for yeah, it. Watch out, mate. <laughs> I... Mate. Oh my He's not seeing it! Oh and then he jumps out! Oh my god, please! What is oh this? Oh my word. You, you bet you died anyway. <laughs> you died anyway. Doesn't matter, he got the style points. We are seeing Quake evolve right before our very eyes this matchup. Rom, oh. you are mad. I love you. But also, you died there. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's gonna die again! Oh. 2 HP, Garfi does get out of the room alive, but at this point, 2 minutes left, he'll take quite a bit of time stacking back up, especially if he loses out on the Mega. Oh, actually, Orbs right on to it, Ron getting pushed back. Garpy Ooh. finishing it up, and it's actually not over yet. 5 frags, 2 minutes, this is still doable. However, I'm looking at the spawn and the jump pad. Yeah, fortunately, Ron did go the other way, so can't quite get the refrag. Yeah, he You will. are right, they, they, this, by no means is this over, there's still, there's still a lot of work left, but... Yeah. That was a good spawn for Gron though, because Garpy showed up hoping to do some damage or maybe take the heavy, but he realized he didn't have the stack, and he realized that Kron had just the perfect spawn to deny it to him, and so he backed away. Excellent defensive rockets from Garpy. He is gonna chase right now. He knows he has to. Oh, misses the rail. Wouldn't have mattered anyways. Gron had picked up Mega just before, so that wouldn't have been the kill shot after all. I think Garpy knows he needs to fight. I say before he dies yeah. and loses the heavy. I was about to say, I think he really was trying to fight for that heavy because he hasn't got a lot of time left. I think, unfortunately, there was an opportunity to come back. We've now hit the one minute warning and, you know, the snowball effect is in full effect. Uh, this should be a 2-0 now for Ron. And it was a worthy attempt there from Garpy. Oh, He's going to get one frag. and I mean, he has a lot of frags in the Pro League thanks to uh, a couple of weeks ago on this very same map versus Sparty. Yeah. Where I'm pretty sure he got over 30 frags. So uh, that's always going to help him in the long run, I'm sure. That oh, might yeah. matter at some point. But right now, this map is going to go to Ron instead. So what can Garpy take away from this? That's the question. Every time a fight happened, Ron had better accuracy. I think he had more of a stack. I think he was just better equipped. Garpy was being a bit itchy with that Dire Orb the moment it was used, yeah. and he didn't get enough damage. I mean, his escape route is now completely gone. And, uh, yeah, just a bit too all-in, I think, some of these fights. That yeah. was a really nice teleport, too. Surgical. Surgical. Front played this map extremely well. He just he set up the traps knowing where they would work best, managed to do a lot of damage with the dual wield, and used and hang or hung on, rather, to his ability long enough to make sure that he could bait it out of Garpy instead. Now, uh, the uh, the pillar near Mega. The pillar, yeah. My personal favorite moment. <laughs> and then at the end of Awoken, the rocket jump up to see that rail angle over the top of the map down to rocket. My goodness, Kron. But you know what that also did? That that pillar moment, it wasted time. It, did, it wasted just a little bit of time where Garpy's running around, doesn't really know what, what he's looking yeah. at. And uh, when he finally gets caught off guard and, you know, the fight happens, it's kind of like, well, you know, that was almost like verging the two-minute point anyway, where there was a pretty significant deficit. So, yeah. uh, you know, pretty well played there. You know, Ron, it's it's the way he was approaching there and Garpy were... I feel like Garpy wasn't making horrendous decisions before the fights happened. It was just, you know, uh, it, it just came down to when the fight took place. Ron yeah. was just better equipped every single time. And it, it, I think in, in a huge part was how slow and hard to find he was.
I mean, how many times did Garpy ambush run there? It just didn't happen. No. And also just the railgun accuracy. Kron really stepping it up this time around. Oh, so much damage. Here we go. Gonna see a... I'm surprised you couldn't see him there. Well, actually, no, that, that's, that's a taster. That's a, that's <laughs> that's a little that, teaser. That's clearly a taster for what we're obviously oh, going yeah. to see a little bit later. Built the hype for that extreme moment of Quake. And look at that, Kron. Yeah, as you said, wisely switching to LG right there. No reason to risk it with the railgun. There were some really good frags this map around. Absolutely spectacular. And it was a much needed recovery. Did he go? No, he just, yeah. He just, he looked at the bottom and assumed that because he yeah. couldn't see his feet sticking out that he wasn't there. And uh, yeah, that was just, um, bam, goodbye. Yeah. And then turning <laughs> left around the corner in the rail room and firing some nails into the corner, like, are you here? That's just in <laughs> insult to artillery right there. But that, that fight that we saw just a second ago where Garpy was for some reason just kind of sticking around, I, I think there is a little bit of that stubbornness that we talked about when we saw Tox, and that was an absolutely beautiful shot that one was even yeah. better a little bit surprised because he even could see the angle with that one thanks to all the action and commotion that was taking place but it's the rails uh, he, yeah. he starts capitalizing <laughs> i like the little 360 coming out of garby he has no clue and then Kron dropping down rockets i mean the rockets could have just been better the first one was a complete miss he was clearly expecting garby to be way further ahead i wonder already. if i also wonder if he was just so excited that he got away with that <laughs> that when the fight actually happened he was a bit like oh, oh i've actually got to take a fight yeah. here too i've actually got to shoot this guy and we actually saw you know 57 uh lightning cells so he's uh didn't have the ammo for no. the lg no, no doubt he would have had lg if he had just a little bit more ammo for that but that is going to be map two done we have map three next veil of nath and we finally get to see that famous Ron Sp Scale bearer. Yep. So uh, we'll see. What do we expect to see from this one? I mean, just as good of a result. Do you think Garpy has a chance here? I mean, Garpy has arguably one of the best champions for this map, Sorlek. Like, she's fast, she's got a lot of stacks, she's got the spit damage with very little health bubbles available, and of course, the map is toxic all around. He can walk through any of the acid pools and take no damage whatsoever, so he's got one of the best champions for Vale. But Kron, if he can keep hitting the shots the way he did on the previous map, and he uses that scale better well, which I don't doubt that he will, then this is going to be extremely difficult for Garpy. If we see something with scale bearer, it's that that bull rush is so good at just setting up the frags, knocking you up and putting you in a position where you haven't really got that amazing air movement. I know yeah. Sorlag has good movement to begin with, but it's still not the same when you factor in how tiny the map is. Plus, I think the unpredictability factor. The thing about the lesser used champions is, even though you can fundamentally play Quake with all of them, it is the flair that the individual champions bring to the table, and Scalebearer is definitely one of them. If you've never played Duel against Scalebearer, and you're against Ron, who has lots of experience here, can you say you're fully prepared for the little unexpected things that might happen? Uh, I'm mainly thinking about just bumping into the guy. Oh yeah, when you go up a bounce pad, he's coming down, or one of those situations, then that can kill you real quick. And look at that speed that Ron is getting just by walking. It's one of Scalebearer's many strengths. Looking for the rail, won't fight it just yet, and we'll retreat out of the room. No ability used just yet, but Garpy did burn his. I always thought that beginner level scale bearer was such a good champion for those that, you know, maybe haven't got the strafe movement down, maybe haven't got a lot of the basic movement, so you can kind of move fast with this champion without having to really do much. However, at this level of play, on a map like this, which has the twists and turns, it still helps a lot now. Opening damage, Garpy should lose a frag there, and he is indeed 1-0. Yeah, completely caught out of position right there and doesn't even make the jump across to the pillar. Kron, perhaps a oh! bit too aggressive, flies right on past him. Three points of health, both players extremely low. That Arby was... won't pursue. And oh! oh! <laughs> the rail! I was about to say that's the clumsiest fight I've ever seen, and then that rail hit. Yeah, never mind. The All right by. once again. Ooh! That is a cheeky rail. Kron. In the backside. A oh, good thing that Kron picked up heavy just before he got railed, because otherwise it probably would have been fatal. He knows he's gonna break away right now, doesn't have to stack to compete with a fully stacked heavy champion like Sorlek, -like, and he's just gonna get out of the room. Oh! oh! We that all... almost went straight for his face. I think we all felt that one. Yeah. We all felt, we literally felt the air zip past <laughs> our cheeks. It's a bit of an explosive map so far. Can yeah. we, we can expect nothing less from these two champions. The rail's gonna be good. Misses the second, but Garpy, not gonna be too shy just yet. Mega gets taken. Yep. Kron now with the light armor. Nice and stacked. The bull rush is ready, as is the LG. And he set up a free shot. Second guess is the weapon choice. Doesn't matter, because Garpy's gonna fall anyway. And there it is, the bull rush. It knocks yep. you in such a straight line. The follow-up shot is so easy to hit at this level of play. There's yep. no way Zron's gonna miss so many of them. 
And right now, though, Garpy doing a good amount of opening damage right there, knowing that Kron has little to work with and defend himself with, doesn't have his ability anymore, and Garpy uses that, uh, that opportunity to take Heavy, position him on Mega, and now Kron has to get out of the room, will take one of the few hell bubbles available to him, but Garpy, using that spit, will know pretty much where he's at right now. Kron setting up a trap, but Garpy, no, he says, I know where you are, and down you go. 3 to 1. I think Kron made a good decision there. Uh, he is going to get ambushed on a unfortunate spawn, uh, just dedicating towards Mega there. Um, but yeah, ultimately, the moment he got hit by that acid damage, I think he knew he knew Garpy could see him, and the location yep. where he was on the map, there were quite a few potential locations. If he dedicated to one of them, there was a good chance he was going to die. So he did try and spring a trap that didn't work out, but I think that was the best of a bad situation recovery attempt right there. Garpy able to freely move around these acid pools. Remember, Sawlag's passive doesn't take acid damage, yep. so these lockbox-style maps are so beneficial to her. The missed rail, and now Garpy's looking to go in. The ball rush trying to escape. Yeah, no attacks here. Nope. Trying to get out. That direct rock out from Garpy, that really was the point that which Kron decided that this is not a fight that he should take and he will just back away and will actually secure himself in heavy as well. Landing another rail as well. Garpy in a bad spot, but the damage combined with the rockets and the spit, that's gonna add up. Kron missing a very important rail right there and both will break away, but they will find each other right back in rockets and Kron, excellent rail to finish it. Straight out of the map, that one. Yep. Very weak though. A light armor is gonna be at least something and there should be some pickups nearby. Ron not confident in the fight just yet. Caught off guard. Going in and again, the, the little bit of, I think, optimized movement where even if you haven't got a ball rush, as long as you're going fast, just moving into a champion to do oh, some yeah. damage. We are definitely seeing Ron go for some of these champion specific fights. It's just that he hasn't got the stack. Yeah. Uh, whereas now, he got that pickup frag. He definitely does. And it was actually pretty close because he knocked Garpy back onto the ledge. A few steps or one step further, he would have gone off the map. And out comes the gauntlet with the plus forward. Garpy, down you go. Kron healing away. That's poison damage as well and looking good. Three frags in the lead. Next point of contest will be heavy and Garpy. Excellent LG. Heavy will be going to the Lizard and maybe he'll get himself a mega as well. Kron contesting. And using actually the bull rush. Oh, and finds him in midair. Excellent play from Grant. Garpy was looking for an escape by dropping down, but Grant clearly saw too that plan and finished him off. You know, I mentioned earlier, uh, and oh my god, that 180 rail. Look at it, a third. It does miss, but Garpy, vulnerable if he gets clipped by one now. With seven of them left, that barely missed. Garpy is really dancing with the devil, testing these rail angles. But he has been able to retreat. Pick up the heavy. Yeah, how much damage is gonna take? The acid spit. In vain, I fear. Garpy just a bit too soon right there on the heavy. Actually has an opportunity to get away because Ron was expecting to see him when he jumped right there and hoped to get a final shot right off there, but ultimately didn't manage to do so. Garpy does get away, but will he be able to survive? He's down to a few points of health. Kron, all you need is that shoddy. But of course, Kron doesn't have an accurate idea just how low Garpy might be. He's gonna have somewhat of an idea now. He knows how much damage he's done, and Garpy somehow is still standing. Yeah. He has a heavy. If he can get this mega, he'll know, I think, they'll have nothing to worry about. So we'll see if Gronk can collect. Whether he is actually starting to delay a little bit. Even a little bit of self-damage. I think he was just trying to sort of waste it. Make his presence known, potentially. Yeah. Or somewhat of a jump, potentially. Like a trick jump, I imagine. Maybe a nail gun. Now at this point, we're past halfway through the time limit of this map, and Garpy's wasting so much time trying to restack while Ron is just in control. Finds an excellent rail. Oh. Out comes the ball rush. Will he find Pain. them? Oh, he nope. hit them terrain. Not that it matters. Not that it matters. Nope, doesn't even need it. And he spots Garpy going through a teleporter, looking for some damage, doesn't do it with the rocket, and he knows he'll have to give up. I got this point, but no, Garpy actually going to heavy right away. What a play from the Brit. And Kron up, then down the bounce pad over and over. Garpy waiting for him patiently. Well done. Now, Garpy just needs four frags. He's surrounded by small pickups, so it's actually not completely out of resources in this situation. The light armor as well. Just like that, he was prepared to take a fight until Kron caught him with the LG. And yeah. now he's uh, straight back to being forced to run away. And luckily for him, Sorlek is good at doing just that. That air control ability gives her so much freedom of movement, but Kron will catch him right in the rocket room. Can he get away? 
you, you, you gotta feel the clench when he jumps out because you know that that rail is just trying to get you in the back. Rockets are decent, but doesn't don't do much damage because, of course, Kron using that skill bearer bull rush, which cuts his damage down. Yeah, reducing the damage during the bull rush is, is one of those underratedly powerful tools that, again, you know, like we talked about levels of experience that Garpy, he's so used to being, I'm gonna pepper some damage, there's close range, yes, get some LG. The moment he's taking heavily reduced damage because he's in his bull rush and then he hits you, I mean, yeah, yeah. it's it's very easy for him to open up and set up a fight, especially in these close quarters. It's why he's gone scale bearer on the Veil of Nath in the first place. Yeah. Now the turnaround damage. Kron hasn't got a ball rush, but his LG has just been that little bit better. Oh. And Garpy almost with the suicide. I wish I could say that's the first time that's happened to him. <laughs> Three HP left, barely hanging on right there, and he is railable. Kron misses the crucial shot, but forces him off of position. Doesn't manage to do the final damage though, so Garpy's still in it. He's got two and a half minutes to work with, three frags to make up. That's definitely still possible, but it's got to start happening soon. Starting to run out of time though. The clock becomes his worst enemy by this point of the map. Just over two minutes and Grom with a very comfortable looking lead. Doesn't even matter at this point that Garpy has the stack because look, those rails on top of being very irritating, I think, for Garpy to deal with. It's just the constant, constant LG. Yeah. And it's because they're both playing the giant champions. And Sawlag, she may be fast, but she's one of the easiest to hit champions in the entire game. If you have a good LG, you're probably not going to miss. Here comes the ball rush. Oh my god, it's just Clay Pigeon shooting at that point. Knock him up, shoot him down. Yeah, what excellent, a kill. Excellent play by Ron, because of course he knows that if he collects major item after major item and his opponent doesn't, he knows that there's not much for Garpy to work with at all, and so he just uses the bull rush, gets us into the room, finds the opponent, and then just finishes it off quickly. And the bull rush giving the reduced damage, yep. the damage you're going to be doing to him while he's setting you up to get that free frag isn't even anything he has to worry about. No, even direct rockets, they only do 50 damage at that point, and when you've got the kind of stack that scale can get up to, I mean, it's nothing to worry about at all. Kron pushing in, yep, that's another rocket, and at this point, one minute left on the clock, five frags to go. Garpy, this is looking like an impossible task. I always love seeing it. We see a top level player going in with a champion that you just by all means don't see every day. It's so refreshing to just see how different the yep. champions can play. I mean, we've seen Veil of Nath countless times already in the Pro League. How many times have you seen it with a scale bearer do this? It just it just makes the whole thing so refreshing. Oh, yeah. Here comes another fight. Garpy still cannot get the damage that needs to be done because Ron continues to outstack and outsustain. 30 seconds left from the very important 3-0. Yep. Expert prediction was bang on. Our prediction, I mean, I think it was a safe bet, wasn't it, to assume this would be how things go down. Yeah. Shame to see Garpy go out like this, but Ron is a rising star, and this is exactly why. Absolutely. And building on what you said earlier, I think it's very nice that the current format of the Pro League allows for such a variety in champions. It's something that we're definitely seeing now more than we used to, and basically every every pro player is kind of forced to adopt a really broad champion pool in oh. order to work with. The spit will take down Kron at the very end, but it won't even matter. Look at that beautiful golden scale bearer, looking good. Definitely doing 800 more damage than his opponent. Good railgun. That's definitely something that Garpy really didn't make good use of this map. He only hit two rail shots out of six fired, and when you're going up against a big target like Scale, rail can be one of your most powerful weapons in the toolbox. Garpy can hit some good rails uh, when the time comes. Today, obviously, was not one of those occasions, but Garpy's mostly known for his rockets. Yeah. And he was always known as having some of the best rockets. There was a time where I actually strongly believed that he had the... It was during the DreamHack Denver times, I think, a couple of years ago, where I would have said that Garpy back then had, I think, the best rockets in the business, which meant in those close quarters maps, he was just untouchable in okay. some ways. It was so hard to contest him when he had a rocket in hand, especially on a map like Blood Run or something like that, where if you're in the center of the map and you're both trying to just go out combat each other, if he had a rocket, you, you're almost guaranteed it would do 100 each time. Oh yeah. Um, but the, it was the complete weapon variety for me that made Ron just kind of almost make short work of him, where before the fights even took place, these initial rails would consistently outstack Garpy to begin with, where yeah. he didn't have as much to work with, and no matter how good his up-close weapons would be, Ron just had the stack, he had the beef, and he just took the fights better, um, yeah. on top of establishing obviously better level of control, and on a map like this, there was definitely an element that Scalebearer brought that Garpy just looked a little bit 
lost with. Yeah. Like, I mean, there, there are certain times he was taking a fight with a ball rush available that the moment that ball rush is there, I, I kind of think that it's like a complete impossibility that he'll survive. Yet Garvey would try and take it anyway. Uh, but that's, you know, not everyone plays this champion and not everyone uses the champion to the degree Kron does. It's yeah. why having this in a back pocket, wow. I mean, come on, man. He's the only champion that can do that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that the whole rail thing also has to do with how much pressure Kron was just able to exert on his opponent. Because when you go down to that rail area on Veil, it's actually a very risky place to be in because you're kind of caught out in the open. There's really not that many escape routes to get away from. So if you're down there trying to get a rail and Kron just comes in as we just saw with that bull rush you're basically done for so that made it very difficult and dangerous for Garpy to just go in there and even collect that railgun well we have to talk about how important this result was for Kron he managed to get 3-0 yeah. uh, another one that we've seen today actually yeah, uh, week so number one I think it was when players were a bit more evenly matched I think because their QuakeCon results made a big part so it was no wonder they were as close as they were but now people are everyone is kind of starting to fight everyone and we are starting to now see I think who the top dogs currently are um, and I think this is a, quite a a strong indicator over how far Kron has come as a player uh, you know Garpy he did not necessarily rule the roost, but he was absolutely one of the top level players during the first year of Quake Champions, yeah. uh, especially in Duel. It was almost impossible to ever count him out, especially on LAN. Uh, and Hrom back then would consistently do well online, and then going into a LAN, he would just be very, very disappointed with his own results because yeah. he just wouldn't place as high as he thought he could do. I definitely think that that shift of power is happening. We're starting yeah. to see a new level of top level, and Hrom is right up there. Yeah, and I think that this is definitely going to be a confidence boost for him because lot Last week or two weeks ago, he lost to Razy in the online section of the Quake Pro League. So obviously it's very good for him to now take down a map 3-0, get those eight points for himself on the board and hopefully carry over into next week, giving him a boost of confidence. Well, that does mean Garpy, uh, unfortunately, is going to remain where he is. No points gained when you get 3 0 by somebody else. It's cutthroat here in the Quake Pro League, but that's half of our EU and CIS journey done for this week. We have another half left to go. Razy and Avec up next. We're going to go for a quick break and set things up. Thanks for watching so far. This is Quake Pro League and we'll see you in a few minutes.